Good afternoon. Welcome to the introduction to social annotation and secondary education session. Um, my name is Lori Buchan and I'll be your hypothesis tour guide for the afternoon. So annotation, what is it? What's brought us all here today? The first thing that we like to do is use this quote um, that's a favorite of our VP at Education, Jeremy Dean. We have all seized the white perimeter as our own and reached for a pen if only to show we did not just laze in an armchair turning pages. We pressed a thought into the wayside, planted an impression along the verge. This is from Billy Collins' mar marginalia. And, and this really speaks to what annotation is. What is annotation? It's, it's we're making our mark. We're thinking critically about what we've just read. We're being an active participant uh, with the content. We're engaging with those who've read before and who will read in the future the same content. It's an age old scholarly practice, pretty much from the, the time that books be, were invented. Um, scholars, students, and everyday readers have been annotating in the margins of, of books. Um, it makes us better readers. It makes us more attentive. It helps to build our understanding. But as books and other assigned readings moved online, we lost that ability to practice and learn this essential skill. With Hypothesis, when Hypothesis is active on a page, um, it allows you to do annotation. It allows you to select text and add in an annotation. It allows you to reply to any annotation that's been made. And it allows you the, the ability to start those conversations in the margins again. How does Hypothesis work in teaching and learning? Well, Hypothesis makes reading active. As you can see here, Sarah Gross from uh, High Technology High School has provided some feedback. Hypothesis enables my students to contribute to the conversation, whether they're frequent class participants or the type that like to sit back and think before responding. I can't call on every student, but by annotating together, we can all join the conversation. Using Hypothesis, it allows all the students to contribute. As she said, it can be those that are extroverted, who you know, in class would normally be the first ones to answer a question, they can still do that. But it also allows those quieter, more introverted students, the ones who have to think a little bit, um, to also have their opportunity to comment. Um, this is an example of um, an exercise where the instructor asks students to annotate using um, current memes. So it became this really fun, interactive, discussion around why do you think that uh, that meme relates to this piece um, in, the, um, in the assignment. Um, so they're really great creative ways to be using hypothesis and helping to make reading active for students in your class. Hypothesis also makes reading visible um, to you and also to the students and to their colleagues or their, their co-students. Um, as you can see here, a student, a student said, one of their student feedback was, I loved using Hypothesis to annotate class readings. It was especially helpful when annotating with my classmates because they made extremely insightful comments that made me think more critically about the passage. And that really is what we want students to do when they're using, it, when they're annotating and, and reading. We want them to think about what they've read. We want, to, we want them to consider other students' insights. Um, and help them sort of broaden their own horizons. Hypothesis also makes reading social. Students can uh, really grasp on to this part of the an of annotation because they're no longer alone while they read. Um, they are reading together and it helps them to feel connected and engaged. Um, they currently, right now in, you know, in, in everyday life, this is what they do. They're inside of games, they're online, and they're uh, talking to uh, you know, their, their colleagues and their friends inside of these games, right on top of the game that they're playing. And this really mimics that. It allows them to start those conversations on top of the, com uh, the content that they're engaging with. And the same as we said earlier, both introverts and extroverts, those who are quick to answer and those who need a little time to think, all individuals can contribute and it allows them that time to process and, and, and not feel like they're under the gun and having to feeling too shy um, to put their ideas out there. As Justin Serenzia from St. George School says, I'll have students who don't like to speak in groups, but when they get into hypothesis, they're the ones driving the conversation. They drive discourse and they'll have all of their peers jumping on to comment and engage in ways that just doesn't happen 
in classrooms. So what about hypothesis in your LMS? Hypothesis uh, was developed, uh, the hypothesis LMS app was developed based on feedback from educators. They loved the idea of hypothesis, but they didn't want to have to send students somewhere to create an account, to have to log in, to join group, a group um, or a classroom. And so what the LMS app allows them to do is to benefit from single sign-on and automatic class rosters. So as soon as a student logs into your, your um, school's learning management system, whether it be Blackboard or Canvas or Brightspace, Moodle, Schoology, Sakai, as soon as they log into your class, as long as you've set up the assignment with Hypothesis enabled, they have access and you'll be able to see their comments be able to filter based on student names and also um, integrate with your gradebook. And here's an example if you see on the far left, um, and, and we'll jump into um, a demo of hypothesis just in a moment, but this just gives you a quick uh, overview when we take a, when we're talking about gradebook integration. Um, on the far left, you'll see the actual content, so the reading that students were um, assigned. In the middle is the hypothesis um, uh, sidebar. So this is where they would make their um, annotations and add in their comments on each other's work and where the discussion happens or the conversation happens. And then to the far right is the grading uh, toolbar. And so you'll be able to, if you set it up as a graded um, assignment within your LMS, you would be able to scroll through and filter on a, a particular student name and be able to see um, any of the comments or any of the annotations that they've made. And then you can um, scroll back to the comment in context amongst the larger uh, rest of the student population comments. So it allows you to take a look at, at their work and assign them a grade, and then that will easily integrate into your gradebook. So questions, what can you annotate? So you can annotate PDFs, you can annotate web pages and online articles, and you can annotate open textbooks and OER content. And we are working very closely with a number of publishers. So coming soon uh, will be the ability to annotate on eBooks and textbooks. So now that you know what you can annotate, what can you put in an annotation? So you can clearly um, do a text, you know, use regular text when you're creating an annotation. You can add in links, you can use images, you can um, add in videos, you can use tags, um, and we'll, I'll show you a little bit about that when we jump into it in a minute. Uh, students can use emojis. Um, if you are math or science and your students are familiar with latex, they can annotate using latex, so they can actually annotate a mathematical document using the formulas um, instead of trying to explain what they're, what they're um, asking about. And again, coming soon are, is um, the ability to annotate using VoiceThread, H5P Interactives, and, and much more as we go, go through product development. So the hypothesis demo, let me take a moment. I'm going to move over here. So um, we can't possibly show you all LMSs in one, uh, one sitting, but what I'm showing you today is Canvas. That just seems to be one of the more popular LMSs, uh, but really the experience, once you get inside of your own LMS and we set this up, the experience of Hypothesis is virtually the same. Um, it really where it differs is in how you set up the assignments. Um, and what I've done here is I've actually clicked on the assignments, our Mary Oliver Wild Geese inside of Literature 404. And I wanted to show you an example of how a, a faculty member has set up an assignment. So when they were creating their assignment, these are the directions to the student around how to use hypothesis. So they've asked them to look for the following poetic elements at work in the poem, character, structure, tone, device, theme. And then this, the instruction is locate an example of one of these elements in the text, create an annotation and explain how it's operating and tag your annotation with the corresponding term. So if you're doing an example of structure, tag it with the word structure, et cetera. Um, and what, what this tells me is I've already clicked on um, the reading. So it's opened up in a new page and I'm just gonna click over there. So here you see hypothesis enabled on an assignment. So to the left is your reading. To the right is the hypothesis sidebar. 
So if I will come in here and I want to instruct students to read through it once without looking at any of the highlights that maybe have been done already, I can tell them to click on this little eye that will turn off all of the highlights or annotations that have already been done so they can read through it, formulate their own ideas, and then turn the annotations back on so that they can see what others have done. Um, when I'm done reading and I found my example of structure, for example, uh, and this isn't actually an example of it, but I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to use it as an example. I would just scroll over top and highlight. And then I have two options. I can highlight. If I highlight, it's only me that sees it. So I, it's highlighting is a personal act. What you want them to do is annotate. Um, however, they can use highlighting as a way, as a study tool, they can turn off the highlights, highlight for themselves, and they'll only see uh, those highlights. But in this case, it's an annotation assignment, so I want them to click on annotate. When I do that, if the hypothesis um, sidebar has closed, it will open back up. It shows me by virtue of color where in the what content in the reading I am actually referring to. And then this is my text box where I make my annotation or my comment. You have full text functionality, so you can bold, italicize, put something in parentheses. This is where you can add in a link. So if there is another reading that the student wants to refer to, um, they can add the link in there. Or if there's uh, music or video or anything, they can add a link in here to, so that it becomes a, a even more interactive uh, type of communication with your, the rest of the class. They can add images similar to the um, example assignment that I showed you earlier. Um, they can do an entire assignment based on or annotating based on images. So it, it can become really creative and really fun um, for you and your students. And this is where if you use latex, if you're math or engineering or science and you use latex, then students can um, actually do their annotations using latex as well. They can use bulleted and numbered lists. And then this is where they would add the tag. So I'm just going to put in this is an example. So that's my, my annotation. I would put in my tag based on structure. And then I'm going to post. So I'm not going to do that here because you know every time I do a webinar, I add in extra um, nonsensical comments. So I'm not going to actually add it, but I would click on post. Actually, I will add it. I'm going to post it. Um, and then it will show in the annotations. So as I go through my annotations on the right, I can see the color changing on the left. So that helps me to see what area or see the content or see the content in context of the full reading. Some other things that you can do over here. So as a uh, participant, so I've made my con comment and I've made my annotation, but now as um, a student, I can come in and I can comment. And as you can see, there's quite a conversation going on here and I can add in my comments and continue the conversation. I can ask questions. Um, I can ask for help. If I don't understand something, I can put that in there and my fellow students will can you know provide me with some prompting or give me their ideas or you as a teacher can come in as well and add in your own comments and, and be part of the discussion. And this is where the community really starts to build and students really feel that they're not alone in the class and they're not alone in the reading. And you as the teacher can see where are people struggling if there are qu common questions, where are they struggling, what areas um, maybe could should you or could you cover in a more synchronous um, session of the course. Um, and also you get to see, you know, everyone participating. So if I wanted to, um, again, when we talked about uh, the tagging, if I wanted to, you know, just take a look at anyone, any of the comments that dealt with structure, if I type them up here, as long as it's been tagged, then that information will, will show up here and I can um, filter the content um, based on the area that I want to cover in that conversation with the class or the area that I want to uh, grade at that moment. So tags can, and, and they can be very creative and you can use them in all kinds of ways, but that's really just the, the one main area that, the main way that we use tags right now. Um, so that's basically it. Um, if, 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 are there any questions? I guess I'll stop for a minute and ask if there's any questions.
That's a great question. One of the important pieces to understand when you're setting up an assignment is that if you are using PDFs, you need to make sure that your PDF is accessible. And what that means is, as you can see, when I'm highlighting here, I'm actually highlighting at the word level. So I'm highlighting, um, which then will make the annotation, uh, will tag the annotation to those words. If you have a non-accessible or what we call a flat PDF, you won't be able to highlight specific words. It will only, for example, if I try to highlight um, this image, all it will do is give me the box around the image. I can't actually highlight any of these words down here. That's what your experience will be if you're not using an, um, an accessible PDF. So the, the process is called OCR. Um, you want air, optical character recognition. And there are a number of programs online. So if you don't have the ability to do that, um, there are some free things that you can download that will, will allow you to scan a PDF and they'll run it through the OCR software to make it accessible. However, um, if you're struggling and you have that question, you can certainly reach out to us or our support team. And we do have a mechanism um, to allow you to do that. Um, and we will help you help you create an accessible PDF. And we will also hopefully they'll drop it in the chat. There is also a tool that we support or that we um, recommend that you can use if you have a non-accessible PDF and you can run it through that program um, and it will make it into a, uh, an accessible PDF that you would be able to use. Um, the, I guess the other piece too, good point. Um, the other piece is a lot of the on-campus um, copy your printers that you have if you're using that as a scanner to scan your your document in um, as a PDF most of them do have OCR software built in so if you're using that it should come back as an accessible PDF any other questions on this excellent okay let's pop back to our presentation so what do you do now? So you've learned a little bit about Hypothesis. We would be more than happy if you have more questions. P please feel free to reach out to the Education at Hypothesis team. Um, you can use that email address. They'll drop it in the, um, in the chat for you. And you can reach out to the team. And we would be happy um, to set up an individualized demonstration for you or for any of your faculty on campus that would be interested. Um, and the next step, we would love to have you join our pilot program. Um, what our pilot program offers is full faculty and student or full faculty training, um, top tier, tier one um, technical and pedagogical support, as well as um, unlimited access for faculty and students. So the idea of the pilot program is you, uh, we work with you to get the integration set up with your learning management system. And then for a, the period of the pilot, you and all your faculty and students are able to make use of it, explore hypothesis to see if it's something that you would make use of in your course um, and be able to, um, without sort of any limits, be able to try it out and have get students feedback and get your faculty feedback to see um, what courses it would be or what disciplines it would be most valuable to you um, in using. We currently have an, over 300 different schools, uh, colleges and universities who have adopted um, Hypothesis or are piloting. Um, these secondary schools are currently partnering with us um, and working through a pilot. Um, then they're providing, we need, would like to thank all of these schools because they're providing all kinds of great feedback um, to help us in the development um, of hypothesis and to help us understand um, where hypothesis resonates the most within the secondary um, and the K-12 market. These are the schools that are currently piloting or subscribing with hypothesis across higher education and school. Um, you can check this out, go to our website, um, web.hypothesis, and you can see all of these schools if you want to take a look um, more deeply into schools that are involved with us. But it's always a nice um, a tie as well. If you have an institution in your area that is using Hypothesis, it's great to introduce your high school students to the tool so that by the time they get to, to um, the college or university of their choice, they're familiar with it and they it's it's they already know how to use it. And so their instructor can move on to sort of more creative uses of it. As we talked about, uh, the pilots include uh, top or tier one tech and pedagogical support. Um, we'll work with your team 
um, to set up the integration. We have an extensive knowledge base that you and your team would have access to. We provide the tier one support directly for instructors and staff. Um, we have a ton of classroom guides. And if you are interested, um, we can provide one-to-one -one instructional design consultations to help you understand the pedagogical value and how Hypothesis could help in your specific classroom or discipline. And what we'd like to invite you to, to now is to get started with a free trial. So the nice part about Hypothesis, it's an incredibly flexible tool. You don't have to use it on every assignment. It doesn't have to be used from the beginning of class. And so we have a lot of teachers who are interested in, in giving a whirl in the next couple of months, the remaining couple of months of, of their classes, um, to give students something a little something different to try, something a little bit more exciting, um, perhaps uh, something that will you know facilitate some different types of conversation. So we would love to have you um, try out in your classroom, try out Hypothesis for free. Um, we'll help you set it up. You can add it to your class for the remaining couple of months, get your feet well, wet, try it out, um, see if it works, see how easy it is to set it up on an assignment or two. And it helps you to sort of understand where and how this might um, improve your students' uh, experience um, over a pilot term, which would be sort of starting September and, and going through the fall. So feel free to visit our website. Um, again, it's web.hypothesis and it's hypothesis.is. Uh, you can take a look at who our team members are, or you can email us at education at hypothesis. We'd be happy to, one of our team members will reach out and get back to you with any information that you need or to set up an additional um, similar session to this if you think your uh, other colleagues would be interested in, in, in having a look at hypothesis. Um, just two more quick things. Um, we host a show called Liquid Margins, and uh, I would encourage you to take a look um, go on our website, uh, take a look at some of the sessions that have already um, happened. We've got recordings of everything there. Um, the, the show is where we collaborate. Uh, we talk about social learning. Um, usually we facilitate, but it's led by uh, colleagues so or your colleagues, so teachers or uh, professors at any some of the institutions that are already making use of hypothesis and they're sharing their ideas of what's worked, um, what creative ways they've used hypothesis. So it gets you your thoughts thinking, uh, thoughts going. Um, we have one, um, a couple on back to school, one for engaging faculty and one for engaging students. Uh, we have a great session, read, write, and annotate. I have one where it talks about math students using annotation, which is great. Uh, a lot of our math teachers and, and faculty members are extremely excited about this option because there just hasn't been a way for them to work with students and, and help them to learn how to read and disseminate and digest mathematical articles. So this is a great tool for that. Um, so I would encourage you to go to that, go to our site and check them out. Feel free to register for any upcoming sessions. Um, and if you aren't able to make the session, but you've registered, we will send out a link to the recording so you can benefit from it, uh, even if you weren't able to make it. And lastly, uh, we are hosting the I Annotate 2021 conference. It's our eighth annual conference for open annotation practices and technologies. It's completely free and it's virtual due to uh, you know, the, the, uh, the ongoing times. Uh, we have five days of keynote speakers, a variety of panels and interactive sessions. You can attend live or you can view them at your convenience. Same as with the liquid margins. If you register, uh, you'll get information about all of, all of the sessions. Um, but if you aren't able to attend, then you will receive um, for any of the specific sessions or panels that you register for, you'll receive recordings uh, of them so you can watch them at your convenience. So we would love to have you. Um, that's it for, for, for the information that I wanted to share with you today, but I'm now open. I'll stick around for a few minutes for questions. Um, so please feel free to uh, put your questions in the chat or raise your hand. Um, I see that uh, my colleagues have been answering questions as we go, so that is excellent. Uh, but if there's anything more, or if you were a little hesitant to ask a question in front of the full group, definitely stick on. I'll wait until everyone's left, um, and I'll be here to answer any questions. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Have a great afternoon.